first motor storm was much loved by early adopters of the PS3. It had amazing graphics, spectacular crashes and mud, lots of mud. Pacific Rift aims to take that mantle up and expand upon the original design in very interesting ways. So everyone knows about the mud deformation in the original motor storm. Although the physics were very impressive, it did make the tracks look kind of similar as they were all focused on the dirt and mud. Pacific Rift fixes this entirely. Since it takes place on an island, many different environmental hazards are thrown into the mix. For example, water is a big consideration now. On one hand, it slows you down, but it also cools down your boost gauge very quickly, so you have to weigh the risk versus the reward. In the same vein, fire can also overheat your boost gauge prematurely, but finding a water source will help you out, even if you have to spend extra time to get to it. Finally, dense forests are filled with branches and foliage that want nothing more to wreak havoc on smaller vehicles. This very terrain was much needed in the MotorStorm franchise, and the track design complements it very nicely. There are two times the courses this time around, and alternate routes and treacherous shortcuts are everywhere. There is a slight problem with this in that some of the pathways aren't incredibly clear, and you'll find yourself going the wrong way or off the side of a cliff the first time you take on a track. So you'll need a bit of practice at each course before you can really start getting aggressive. Another interesting layer of strategy comes from picking different kinds of vehicles. This is tied to the environmental hazards. For example, tree branches or logs might bat a motorcyclist off easily, while a monster truck can just barrel through them unhindered. All of these vehicles handle differently of pros and cons to them. The bigger rides are slow but will trounce the smaller ones, while the smaller vehicles are more nimble and have easier access to more paths. The differences here are even more pronounced than what we saw in the first game, which is great. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of race modes. There are standard races, speed races, and elimination style races. Eliminator works exactly how you think it does. Whoever's in last place every 10 seconds or so gets thrown out of the race. This is fun, especially given the strategy involved in picking vehicles. However, the speed events are a different story. These are checkpoint-based races. It's just you trying to hit all the checkpoints before time runs out. The problem is that you only see one checkpoint at a time, with the next one not appearing until you've hit the current one, and some of them are pretty close together. This can lead you to missing checkpoints completely because you don't have time to react, especially if you're using boost. The controls are generally good, but the vehicles still slide around a little more than they probably should. The main gameplay mechanic of switching between boost and braking is still in full effect, and that's still awesome. A number of the presentation aspects from the last game have been greatly improved. Load times are cut down a good bit since the vehicle selection screen has been streamlined. Split-screen racing also makes an appearance this time around with support for up to four players, and it actually works quite well. MotorStorm Pacific Rift is certainly a worthy follow-up to one of the most chaotic racers we've ever seen. This time around, the tracks are better and the strategy is deeper. It may not have quite the same freshness and attitude of the original, but it's still a great way to spend your time during a virtual island getaway. For the full written review, race over at IGN.com.